Hi everybody. So today I wanted to do something that you've been asking me about. I've gotten a lot of messages from you, a lot of comments from you, um, and you want to know my thoughts on the Disney Plus series on point because it is essentially a documentary series on the School of American Ballet. And I literally lived that. <laughs> so you want to know how accurate it is. You have sent me a bunch of questions. So I want to do a video giving you my thoughts on it. Um, first of all, I want to say I think it is a beautiful series. I think it was incredibly well done. It was incredibly filmed. Um, the students are so articulate. Can we just say that right now? <laughs> the From the young ones to the more advanced, all of them were so articulate, so good on camera. Um, if any of you are watching, props to you. You guys are all amazing and headed for a great future. Um, I just loved everybody. I loved little Brandon. I loved Kai, um, Sophia, Ruby. Ruby, I think you're amazing. Um, you are so articulate. I love your passion for ballet. Um, just everybody, everybody I think was so, so beautifully cast, so articulate, so poised. Um, so props to the dancers. Um, so a couple of thoughts. First of all, I will say that it is completely, at least from my perspective, accurate. Um, that is exactly what I lived while I was there. Now you have to remember I was never there as a child So I was not a part of the children's division, but I saw it on a daily basis and I really and truly can say Speaking from my own experiences nothing was Created or you know dramatized for the camera. It was all very very accurate So that's good to know for all of you it, that was the experience I had especially as a as an older student um, What was the, the weirdest thing for me? I have to say is that with the exception of Katrina Killian K. Mezo Suki Shore who were all my teachers K. Katrina and Suki I had almost every day um, My generation is now teaching and that was really weird for me. <laughs> it made me feel really old. For example, Alan Pfeiffer, who was interviewed a lot, um, who was doing the auditions, teaching the part partnering classes. I danced with Alan. I did Flower Festival with here on him, if you want to see Alan dance, right up there. Um, Adam Hendrickson, who was Drosselmeyer in the show. He was also teaching at Halloween. Um, the, I think, I can't remember his student's name, I think it was Henry, sat next to him and he was like pretending to be Adam Hendrickson. I danced Western Symphony with Adam Hendrickson. He was my, um, Mercutio at one point. Um, Dina, the, the children's ballet mistress, who by the way, is a legend. Dina, you are amazing. I was watching both her and Arch. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> you know, she was not the children's ballet mistress when I was there. It was Gary L. Whittle, who's another legend. But... Dina is unreal. Dina was my nurse in Romeo and Juliet. If you want to see Dina as the nurse, linked in a card. So it was really weird for me. And Arch, I did a couple of things with. Um, who else? Andrew Scordato, who was one of the teachers. He and I got in. To, we were at the school together. I think he got in the year before I did. Um, Megan Mann, who is Alan Pfeiffer's wife, got in with me. Megan Johnson, who was one of the teachers, got in with me. So it was really weird for me to sit there and see all these people that I either got in right in the company with or who came in after me are all the faculty now. And it's sort of like my generation is teaching. Um, and then of course, Jonathan Stafford. I did a couple of things with him and I'm really good friends with his wife, Brittany Pollock. So, and I've been to their apartment. So it's a little odd for me to see my generation <laughs> teaching. I felt really old, um, you know, because now we're all in our thirties, some are in their forties and you know, it's, that we were all the babies at the time when I was there. I mean, Dina and Arch are, you know, a little bit older, but the rest of them were, I danced with them. I mean, Alan and I did Flower Festival, and now he's one of the major faculty members. So it's just a little odd. You know, you get to a point in your life where suddenly you're not the young one anymore, and it's really strange. Um, so that was my biggest reaction to that series. It was not the students. It was, oh my gosh, my generation is now, <laughs> now running the place. Um... So some of you have asked, like I said, is it accurate? Yeah, that's how it goes. Um, the partnering classes, the point classes, you are watched all year long for apprenticeships and apprenticeships are a really big deal, which I've talked about in some Once Upon a Point videos. If you wanna hear my personal story, I'll link that in a card in below as well. Um, but apprenticeships are a really big deal. The other odd thing for me, um, 
no matter which side of the, the argument you're on, was that Peter Martins is no longer there. You know, when I was there, Peter was New York City Ballet. Um, and so to hear them say, even though I know him really well, Mr. Stafford, da 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 da, I'm like, Mr. Stafford, that's weird. Because <laughs> for us, it was Peter, you know. So it's just a little bit, that was also very strange, but um, that was my experience. The other thing that was very different is they have really renovated the school. That front studio where there was that big window where all the students were looking in um, for Studio One, that used to be a wall. That was not a window. Um, so that was a bit odd for me. The floating studios they have that all the little kids were in the little smaller studios, those were built while I was there. We never really used them. Um, so the, the place looks a little bit different. Orange everywhere, that was not there. It was all mostly gray and red when I was there, I think. Now everything's orange. So the, the whole, the, the renovations were also very strange. But the children's auditions, pretty much exactly the same. I mean, I was never actually in them, but from what I observed and what I heard, um, the way the older kids dance, the Pilates room, the dorms, all of that, I mean, it's all the same and very accurate. So, you know, and poor Sam, when he had his injury, that's what you feel like. You are, you go to every class and you watch whether you're dancing or not. You sit in the booth, you take notes, you go to West Side PT across the street. I mean, it's literally what I lived. So if you've watched it or if you haven't watched it yet, know that it is very, very, very accurate. Um, nothing was dramatized for the cameras. It was not a, a reality show. It was more of a documentary series. Um, in terms of Nutcracker, speaking from personal experience, yeah, the first rehearsal with the kids, they're always so prepared. They're often more prepared than the company is. <laughs> They'd come in and they know what they're doing and we're all like, what? Um, but it is chaos because you have two casts of children, you have probably two casts of party scene parents, like six casts of host and hostess, you know, five Drosselmeyers. I mean, it's like, and then same thing with act two. You know, you have all the angels, all the Polly's, all the candy canes times two, and then 18 million sugar plums and 42 dew drops. <laughs> it's just, it's so, it would, yeah. Being, when they showed that first rehearsal with the, ch the children in the studio, like I would, like I started to get tense because I remember it. It's, it's a madhouse. Um, funnily enough, the cast that was dancing that first rehearsal, Megan Fairchild, Danny Albrecht, um, even Maria too. That was the first cast when I was there. So props to them. Danny really has been doing Candy Cane for 20 years. He was first opening night cast when I was an apprentice, however many years ago, when I was 17. I'm 32 now. Danny was still opening night Candy Cane. <laughs> um, oh, in that rehearsal, if you go back and watch um, the studio rehearsal of Nutcracker, Drosselmeyer, Sean Swazi was my Romeo. Um, the one who is, when they were all in street clothes in the studio, Sean Swazi, if you want to see, he's the one I did Romeo and Juliet with. Um, now he's doing Drosselmeyer. I don't think he was doing Drosselmeyer at the time. He also does Candy Cane and did Chinese, I believe. I don't know if he does Chinese anymore, but he, he also does Candy Cane. Um, so seeing Sean do Drosselmeyer was also really fun. I was like, oh, there's Romeo. Um, but yeah. And really, there really are usually around 15 casts of Sugar Plum. Now, not all of them get to rehearse with the children. The first weekend's casts, the, the Friday, two Saturday, and the Sunday, which are typically three casts for five shows, opening weekend. Those are the casts that do the studio runs. Those are the casts that do the dress rehearsals. Um, when I did Sugar Plum, I debuted when I was still in the core, and I de debuted like week four. I didn't get the kids till the show because it really doesn't affect you. I mean, you lead them around and that's about it. So not every sugar plum gets to rehearse with the angels before the show. First three casts do, which you saw Megan Sterling and Lauren Lovett. Um, the other weird thing that you all might not have picked up on is that especially for Nutcracker, you don't get the orchestra till the show. You do all the dress rehearsals, all the tech rehearsals with piano. 
and you because it's Nutcracker and everybody knows that music and the orchestra plays it every year, you don't get the, the orchestra to the show. There is no orchestra rehearsal. So you do up until opening night, you do it with piano, which is why when the kids said, it sounds so much louder with the um, orchestra, it's because, yeah, you don't get the orchestra till the show. So hopefully you've heard Nutcracker music before. <laughs> Otherwise, it is a big of a shock, bit of a shock. Um, ballets like Stravinsky things or first time runs of things, you get the orchestra. But if it's a ballet that's gone before, if it's one you do every year, like Serenade or Symphony in C or sort of the, the New York City Ballet staples, Midsummer, you don't get the orchestra to the first show. Um, it's only ever piano because they're really expensive. So <laughs> that's why you don't get the orchestra. But so that was very accurate. Watching those polys get under the skirt for the first time, totally accurate. Um, you know, just the whole thing, you know, Maria and Megan Gary. I mean, it, it literally was what I lived. So you can watch that series knowing it, it's true knowing that nothing was dramatized. And huge props to Dina and Arch. As far as I'm concerned, those two were the star of the series because that is a huge job, is children's ballet mistress and the assistant to, to, to the children's ballet mistress. Um, those kids are always so prepared. Um, every ballet we did with them, not just Nutcracker, it, there was never a time when we came in and, and they were not knowing what they were doing or in the wrong place, those kids, and it's down to Gary L, who was the ballet mistress when I was there, and now Dina, they prepare them and work with them so beautifully. It's amazing. They would come, it was like they were members of the company. Every ballet we did with them, Swan Lake, Midsummer, um, you know, Mozartiana, the four that do Mozartiana, you know, any ballet with children, they were always so prepared, so well behaved, um, and did their jobs. Capellia. I mean, I did Waltz of the Hours. I was the lead of the Waltz of the Hours, and that's 24 little girls with the one principal dancer in Capellia. And those kids never missed a beat. Not once. So they have got it together. Something is, something is going right. So yeah, I was very impressed with the series. Um, and in terms of those advanced kids, yeah, they all speaking from experience, you all want it so badly. And we were all very supportive of each other. But at the same time, you know that there's only going to be so many apprentices at the end of the year. So it's sort of this weird thing of, I want an apprenticeship, but I know I need to audition, but... And it's, it's they're all vying for so few spots, and they're all so talented. Um, you know, so... It's, it's a hard thing, you know, you want to be happy for friends and you want to support each other, but yeah, it's it, all year long, you know, you're all vying for an apprenticeship with New York City Ballet. You wouldn't be there if you weren't, because that's the only way to get into New York City Ballet is through the School of American Ballet. So it's, once you get to the advanced level, it's a totally different ballgame. Um, and it is, it's tough. And those kids work so hard. They push each other every day. You know, you're constantly, like, you can see when each teacher is giving them corrections. It's like, I was like that too, because you, every day counts. Every class counts. Um, and it's a, it's a tough, tough place to be. But, you know, the teachers were always very supportive. Kay was very supportive with me. Suz, Suki was very supportive. Susie, I wish they had gotten more of Susie Pilar. Because Susie Pilar is a character, and I love her to death. I wish they would have gotten more of her. She was the one on Halloween, the teacher dressed up as Big Bird. That's Susie Pilar, who um, <laughs> is amazing. But they were also supportive. But it is a, it's a very tough situation because you're all vying for those few spots. But I think they did a great job in showing that without dramatizing it, you know, without making it like a reality show. So I was very impressed with that because that was my worry that it was gonna turn into a cutthroat kind of reality show about those apprenticeships, but they didn't do that, which I was I was very impressed with. So props to Disney Plus, props to Disney, props to everybody involved. Um, I thought it was beautifully, beautifully done. And trust me, I would have told you if I didn't think so. I would have been like, nope, that's not accurate. So it's very accurate, great show. If you haven't seen it, go watch it.
Um, so anyway, if you have any more questions about it that I didn't get to, I'm trying to think if I didn't get to anything. Um, leave me a comment in the box below. I will do my best to get to it. If you missed yesterday's launch of Catherine Morgan and Friends, online classes, privates, and more, right down there you can click it to watch. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.